right, so I'm gonna talk about the tuners that I use. They're all the same. They happen to be the EC tuner uh, made by Eric Cortina. And, uh, you know, yes, I'm friends with Eric, but I'm also a big fan of the tuner. Um, one doesn't have to do with the other. Uh, that being said, uh, I really love his tuner. And it's for a couple of reasons. One, I really like how it's flush with the barrel. Now that does require that your gunsmith or you, if you're, you are your own gunsmith, take your barrels down and it does need to be threaded. And I know that's kind of, you know, the, the downside that other tuner companies talk about, but I don't know. I don't get it. If I'm, if I'm adding this much weight back and the tuner works, why do I care? And for me, form factor has a lot to do with things. Um, if I have two opportunities to use a tuner and one is a big clunky weight and one is a sexy add-on to my barrel, I'm going to go with the sexy add-on because that's just how I am. However, I'll talk about this one. I can't really speak to too many other tuners and how they work, um, having not used a lot of other ones. So here's how the Cortina tuner works. One of the beauties about it is that it literally works within one full rotation. Now, these screws are very loose. They should not be this loose if you're going to be shooting. I just have it loose so that I can show you guys uh, inside of, you know, how it works, the threading, stuff like that. So here's what would happen. You're going to do all your normal load development with this tightened all the way down, basically at a zero point. So you can see I've got my zero at my mark here. So it's all the way tightened down. I do all my lo normal load development. So I do all my development at 100 yards. I do my powder tests. I do my seating depth test. Now, in the past, I would have stopped at my seating depth test, and I will show you an example from today. So this is yesterday. I went and did a seating depth test. This is just, you know, off the lands, 9, 12, 15, 18, whatever. And you can see that uh, I'm not super thrilled with any of these. I mean, they're they're adequate enough for, for the purposes of doing this and showing you guys how well the tuner works. And in some ways, this probably actually exemplifies why the tuner works so well for uh, most people. So you can see that there's a couple decent groups, like that's almost acceptable, that's almost acceptable, you know, again, almost acceptable. There's a lot of almost acceptable right in here from 18 to 24 or 27. Um, you know, in the past, if I was not gonna do another seating depth test, I had a match in a couple days, and this was all the data I had to go with, you know, I would still pick something in the middle. I'd probably go with 21 or 23 or 22 or something like that, and just call it good. And, and it would probably be acceptable enough for a match and I would probably do fine. But here's where the tuner really shines. So I went ahead and picked 21 for the purposes of the next test. So I loaded up 36 rounds with a, with a 21 jump. And uh, this was a barrel that needed to be completely retested. So, um, you know, again, I, I went and found my, found my lands, did my jump. That's the last time I'm going to do that because I don't go chasing my lands. And... Here's what happened. I went and shot a tuner group. Now, here's how the tuner group works. You go out, you take three shots. Uh, so I start on two, then you go to four, then you go to six, eight, 10, and so on, until you've done one full revolution. There's absolutely no advantage in continuing the revolution. So you don't need to go to 26 and 28 and you know 96 or whatever. Zero to 24, that's it. And uh, the reality is, having done some testing, once you go past 24, the cycle pretty much repeats itself. So what you see on paper from 0 to 24, it's just going to be pretty much cyclical. Not perfect, but it does tend to work that way. So here's what I had. So I went out. There's my number 2 setting. 4, 6, 8. You guys get the idea, right? And you can see you know, sort of, okay, okay, getting better. And then, okay, now we're talking, ooh, that opened up. And then bam, 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 thank you. And then, okay, we had, we had a flyer, we had a flyer, we had a flyer. And, and sure, I can chalk this up to the fact that it was a little bit of a windy day, but the point is, I'm still looking for the best group no matter what the conditions are because the tuner's still doing its job. So in this particular case, I took a load that looked decent and turn it into a load that looks pretty amazing. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go test this because I just did it today, but uh, by all accounts, this is going to be fine at a thousand yards and that's all I need to know. Uh, however, here's an interesting thing. 12, 14, and 16 are really my shining stars. 
I don't love that because I did have a flyer. And I don't play games like, oh, I might have pushed the stock or, oh, I bumped it or whatever. I just don't play those games. I want I want the best data. If the data is good, I'll use it. If this all looked like garbage, I would go out and do the test again. I don't play games with, you know, oh, that one was, a you know, I bumped a stock, I bumped a stock, I bumped a stock. You know, oh, the velocity must have been off. No, we don't play those games. The data is good or the data is bad. That's all there is. So with my tuner now, I've got everything from 12 to 16. Now, the reality is 16 starts to get some vertical, okay? And 12 sort of started with a little bit of more horizontal, right? So it's a little shorter, but wider. And then 14 is this gorgeous little group in the middle. So I'm going to go with tuner setting 14, but here's the deal. And this is where you really have to be committed and you have to have good loading procedures, good brass prep, good ESs, good SDs. This is not a miracle cure, okay? It is a tuner. It tunes the load. That means you don't fiddle with it every time you shoot a bad string at a match. So I would go to 14, right? So I get to 14 and now I would lock it down, okay? And I'm going to show you real quick because this is, it is important. So the way that those screws are, I showed you that there are the detents in there, right? And what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to lock this down and you're going to get it pretty tight, okay? Don't be afraid. I mean, you're not going to bust it, but you're going to make it pretty tight. And now it takes a fair amount of force. I mean, I'm having to grip it and turn it. I'm going to set it to 14 and I know the glare is horrible. So anyway, it's set to 14 and guess what? It's done. I'm going to go shoot matches. I'm going to go practice, whatever. I'm not going to touch this, okay? This isn't a play with it just because you think you're shooting a bad group tool. I did my testing. I have my data. It's done. It's no different than doing your testing in a barrel and then being done with your barrel for, you know, for a match. Here's the only thing that I will say as a caveat. If by some weird thing, you get to a match and it's in a different place, a different altitude, a different temperature, a different humidity, who knows? And it is truly shooting remarkably worse than any of your testing. Like maybe I'm shooting a 12 inch vertical or a 14 inch vertical, or I mean, even an eight or 10 inch vertical. And I'm like, oh, this is horrible. There's no way in the conditions I'm gonna be able to compete. I will make an emergency, and this is so rare, an emergency adjustment. And here's how I'm going to base that. 14 was my number, and I could either go up or down. Now, some people base it on the outside temperature, outside humidity, to altitude, you know, barometric pressure, who knows? There's all different ways people do it. But here's what works for Eric's tuner. From your go point, which is 14, you will have one group left or right that has more vertical. And you will have one group left or right that is pretty close to your original, or it might even just be wider, but not as much vertical. So guess what? 14's my go number. If I were at a match, and if I was struggling, and if things just were not working, and I was confident that it wasn't my wind reading, and I was confident that it wasn't any number of other factors, I might go down to 13 or 12. I would not go upwards because I start growing in vertical, right? So from here to here, from here to here, wide. I want wide, I don't want tall. So this is your only safety gap once you've done your testing. Now let me show you another one that I did. This one's from a few days ago. A little bit different load. And you can see the same thing happens. And this one really does a great job of kind of showcasing what happens here. So this one, it was not as good, right? Like there's really nothing to love here, like eh, but it's surrounded by horrible and horrible. So you don't take single numbers, like you go retest. You don't say, well, that's a one hole. Even if that was one hole, I would not take it because before and after are horrible. This is great vertical, but I have no data to back it up because I didn't shoot anything above 24 and I'm not going to. These are all horrible. And, and the only thing that's usable is a good vertical, but horrible, you know, horizontal here. Pretty decent vertical, uh, but some horizontal stringing. And then some really crazy vertical stringing, but great horizontal. So guess what? If I had to base it on this target alone, and I was not going to retest, then I would go with seven, okay? 
Six isn't great, eight isn't great, seven is probably gonna shoot better than either one of them. And then what have we learned? If I had to make an adjustment, I would go to the one that has the least amount of vertical. And this really helps showcase it. Really good, lack of vertical, lots of vertical. And this is going to really extrapolate at 600 to 1,000 yards. I mean, it's gonna go woo, way open. This is just gonna open a little. Maybe I get the width, but I don't care. I can deal with the width. So I go with seven. I'm just gonna run with it because I can't do any other testing for this particular you know, hypothetical instance. And then if I have to make an emergency adjustment, I'll go back to uh, I'll go back to six. But again, I have two decent groups to make an observation on. If it was this or if it was this surrounded by this kind of stuff, I wouldn't use the data. Data, 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 that's what I use. So you can see how this works. I will tell you that that without a doubt, I notice a difference in my shooting. Um, now, when I say I notice a difference in my shooting, it doesn't mean that I shoot better scores by making worse wind calls. I still have to do my part, but this does help just tune it that much more. But again, you have to have good brass prep beha behavior and procedures. You have to have good ESs. You have to good good SDs. Your ignition has to be good. Your powder has to be good. Everything still has to come into play. This is not a magic fix-all. But for guys that know what they're doing and guys that are willing to use these appropriately, they do make a difference.